Simon here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're brand new, hit the subscribe button for weekly content on all things rent to rent, creative cash flow, BRRRR, HMO, and serviced accommodation. So today's video is all about BRR and why it's so powerful. And the thing is, most people, you might even have done this already before, you build up a pot. You put it all into one buy to let or HMO, okay? And then you wait for the returns to come to you. So you put a hundred grand in, let's say it makes 20 grand net per year. Nice, nice amount by the way, 20% return, okay? It's gonna take you five years before you get that hundred grand back. And in the meantime, as you can see, if you need a hundred grand to do a deal and you've only got 20 or 40 or 60, you've not got enough, which means you're stuck. That's the traditional way of buying property and it's flawed. Because I don't know about you, but when I've got 100 grand, I wanna make that go as far as I possibly can. So in BRR, what you do is you take your 100 grand, okay? First things first, you need to buy a bit of a discount, okay, below market value. The second thing we do is then we do a refurb to add massive value. And then the third thing you need to look for is a spread between the most expensive property on a road and the cheapest property on the road. And what we wanna do is we wanna buy the cheapest, add value and hopefully refinance at the top. Once you've added that value, you can then go to the lender and say, hey, it was worth I know, let's say 200 grand, it's now worth 300 grand, pay me, okay? And they will give you money back based on the loan to value, which means you then can get some money back, which means your return on investment will increase in the first investment, okay? Because you've got less money in it and you've got money to put into the next deal. So why is this so powerful? Because you're able to rinse and repeat. Okay, that's the key. You're gonna buy the property, you're gonna refurb the property, rent it out, okay, to prove the income, refinance, and then repeat again and again and again. Now, I didn't really know this at the beginning because I was pretty new to property, but my first ever purchase was a BRR. You know, I did buy it below market value, I did add value, and I did manage to recycle my, my money. And that's all I would do moving forward, okay? So you need to make sure that you get educated, you know your market, you're buying right, adding value, and you know the ceiling limit. The holy grail of BRR is getting all your money out, okay? So that's when you might put 100 grand into a property, maybe 60s for the purchase, 40s for the refurb, and you refinance it to a level where you can pull all your money out which literally means that you're able to go and do the exact same thing. And we've even seen circumstances where maybe, you know, we've ended up adding more value than we even could have imagined. And not only did we pour all our money out, but we've actually made a profit, which means you're either getting a house for free or somebody's paying you to buy the asset. And that's the power of BRRR. It's like, if you get it right, you can just go on and on and on and on and on. And I've managed to do seven of these now exclusively using the revenue from my rent to rent business. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hang on a minute, this sounds a bit too easy. It's not easy, okay? Uh, it's actually one of the more hands-on strategies because you are going to have to get your hands dirty or outsource and spend a lot of money on other people getting their hands dirty. By the way, I never get my hands dirty, just saying. Um, and you're gonna be all in, because you're gonna be doing big refurbs. My first refurb, I didn't know anything about refurbs, okay, and before I knew it, I was back to brick. I literally purchased a house to break it down again. So it is hands-on and it is quite heavy in terms of the renovations that are gonna be required, usually, if you wanna get the maximum value that is. But there's two dangers that you need to watch out for. The first one is, okay, overspending when it comes to the purchase. This means, right, you do need to get a bit of a discount. Now, I've heard of people talking about getting properties half price, 40% discount, 30% discount. But the fact of the matter is, if you go round to agents, 
offering half price, you're going to get blacklisted. Okay, so there's a fine art. We want to get a discount, um, but not overdo it. But what you can't do is if the ceiling, okay, of a road is 200 grand and you're buying at 195, that's not going to work. You need to be below that to give you the spread. The second danger is once you've got that discount, okay, you can't overspend on the refurb. So what that means is let's say value of the house is maybe 200, but you've picked it up at 160, okay, then you're not going to want to spend 80 on the refurb. Okay, because the ceiling's 200, you're going to want to spend 15 or 20, meaning that's your profit, the 20 or 25. Okay, so they're the two key things to watch out for. Make sure that you don't do that. And look, I'll be honest with you, there's been times, in fact, on one of my latest deals, I probably did overspend a little bit compared to the ceiling of the area. Um, but my reason for that was I never intend on selling the property and I liked the cash flow. The cash flow was huge. So I was willing to leave a bit more money in. But if you are starting out and you wanna recycle your money, make sure that you don't overspend on the purchase. Make sure you don't overspend on the refurb. Hope you found this useful. I'm actually sat in one of my BRRs at the moment. The value is coming in next week and I'm hoping to pull out 150 grand to go again and again and again. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in the next video and stay tuned for the valuation I get on this one. Wicked.